You might have seen a slash 24 network represented as 255.255.255.0. And why exactly is that? Why would this be represented like that? So lastly, there's one more thing that you'll need to understand, and that's understanding what a network looks like in dotted decimal format. And that's because you won't always see this CIDR right here written out in a slash notation that makes it easily identifiable. Why? That's beyond today's explanation. But if you've ever been on a Cisco CLI device and you've done a show output, you might have noticed that this slash 20 could have been written in a, a different format, or you might have seen a slash 24 network represented as 255.255.255.0. And why exactly is that? Why would this be represented like that? And another question is what would a slash 20 be represented as in dotted decimal? format. So the reason that it's written out in this value, or not necessarily the reason, but how you would go about identifying what a slash 24 would translate to in a dotted decimal format is following this format right here. We have all the resource that we need right here with the block size value, as well as the network address calculation that we did in the first row. So without getting too far in the weeds, we know that the most common subnet would be a slash 8, a slash 16, and a slash 32, which is one address, by the way. The dotted decimal, in this case, for a slash 8, would be represented as 255.0.0.0. And for a slash 16, it would be 255.255.0. And then for a slash 32, that would be represented as 255.255.255.255. And I know that looks a little horrible there. But essentially, you know, we can use this as a landmark when it comes to eyeballing, you know, where this falls. The dotted decimal, you know, has two 2555s. Then we know we're working with a slash 16 or higher. And that can be your indicator as to, you know, what octet or whatnot you're working in. In this case, we know that uh, this slash 20 is going to fall within this third octet, octet based off of this chart that we, we drew out. There will be a total of four, all split up based on eight because 32 divided by eight is four octets of eight. And so with this information, because we know that we're going to be working within the third octet because that's where 20 falls. The way that you go about calculating how many, uh, what the subnet mask in dotted decimal format would be is essentially taking the block size and wherever it is within that specific octet, I'll draw this line right here because that's where you'll stop counting. You wanna add up all of these numbers going to the right. So if we're working with a slash 24, it starts at one. So you do one plus two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128. And if you add up all of those numbers, that'll give you the value of 255. So that's why in this case, this third octet value is 255. But in this case, since we're working the CIDR notation of a slash 20, and we wanna identify what the dotted decimal form factor would be, well then we'd simply come down to where its block size is. We've indicated that it increments, its subnets are in increments of 16. And so we'll add everything going to the left. And now I'm not, I'm not a human calculator. I only know some of these because, you know, it's just simple addition. But if we calculate 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128, that'll let us know what the value of that third octet would be. So I'll calculate that equals 240, 140, which would make the complete dotted decimal of this slash 20 network be represented as 255.255.240 dot zero. And that's how you do it, folks. 
since I always leave these videos off on a, you know, a puzzle to you, I'd like you to let me know down in the comments, what would a slash 22 network look like if you represented it in the, in the subnet mask? So just take this value right here and change that to a 22 and let me know down in the comments what that subnet mask would equate to using the formula that we just covered. Well, folks, that is all for this video. I hope you found this video helpful towards your IT journey. If you did, be sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more helpful insights uh, that you can use to advance in your IT career with confidence. As always, folks, thanks for viewing, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.